This short video is on the overview of the autonomic nervous system. So let's look at the name of this system first. And as it applies, autonomic looks like the word automatic. And that's exactly what happens. This is automatically controlled by our central nervous system. So oftentimes it's also referred to as the involuntary nervous system because we don't consciously control this. And specifically, it controls the visceral organs, so the deeper organs, and the specific effectors, the muscle or tissue that is controlled, is the cardiac muscle and also the smooth muscle. So let's think about where the smooth muscle is located deep within the body. And first of all, one location that we find it is in the bronchioles. So remember, this is part of the respiratory system. So the bronchioles can either dilate or they constrict. And that's an automatic response that happens because of the neurotransmitters released from the autonomic nervous system. Another location that we find smooth muscle is going to be in the blood vessels. In the walls of the blood vessels, there is smooth muscle. And this can also cause dilation or constriction. Another location, one of the most common places that we find smooth muscle is in the, di the digestive system. So the stomach, the small intestine, for example. Another location is in the urinary system, specifically the urinary bladder. Another location then finally would be in the uterus, so part of the female reproductive system. So some of the most important parts of this system are the three bullets that you see here. The effectors, the efferent pathways, and also the uh, ganglia and the neurotransmitter effects. The effectors are going to be the tissue that specifically is activated within the somatic nervous system, which you can't quite see on this slide. But somatic nervous system, recall, is innervating the skeletal muscle. So that is voluntary. But the autonomic nervous system is involuntary. So the effectors are going to be cardiac muscle and also smooth muscle. Think of some of the examples that were listed on the previous slide. The efferent pathways are going to be a little different than the uh, somatic nervous system. With the efferent pathways, there's actually two motor neurons. And within the somatic nervous system, there's only one motor neuron. So the autonomic nervous system has two motor neurons. And finally, the neurotransmitter effects is the most significant thing. This happens because of the neurotransmitters that are secreted or are released from the postganglionic neuron. And the two neurotransmitters in the autonomic nervous system are norepinephrine and also acetylcholine. And it's the same acetylcholine that was released in the somatic nervous system. And there's some tables that show all the specific neurotransmitter effects. For example, what does norepinephrine do to the bronchioles? What does acetylcholine do to the bronchioles? And finally, on this flow chart, you've seen this before, and the autonomic nervous system has two distinct divisions. The sympathetic nervous system is going to be all of the E activities. So it would be things like emergency, things like embarrassment. So when somebody is embarrassed, for example, all of the blood flow goes to the capillaries in their, um, in their cheeks, for example. Uh, so that's a really good example. Other E activities um, are going to be things like um, um, exercise and finally excitement. So we can write exercise down here and we can also put excitement as the last one. And the most common um, way to refer to the sympathetic nervous system is that it is our fight or flight nervous system. So you can see that a lot of these E activities kind of fit into the fight or flight nervous system. It's an emergency, 
uh, we're exercising, we're excited. Whereas the parasympathetic division is commonly referred to as the rest and digest nervous system. So when somebody is just relaxing, when they are just chilling on the beach, these are going to be the parasympathetic division is going to be activated. And these are the D. This is also called the D division. So things like digestion, which is already listed here. Uh, so the digestive system is going to be activated from the parasympathetic division. Other things that happen are defecation, which is very kind of the end part of digestion. Uh, also, another example would be urination, which is also called diuresis. So again, this is the D division, and the sympathetic division is the E division. So let's look at the anatomy of the autonomic nervous system. And this is showing an automatic um, reflex. And you've seen this before. You've seen um, uh, the spinal cord, part of the central nervous system. Now we're looking at the anatomy of the autonomic nerves that come out of the spinal cord. The first is the preganglionic axon. And this is the first motor neuron. Remember that the somatic nervous system, so affecting the skeletal muscle, is only going to have one motor neuron, whereas the autonomic nervous system is going to have two motor neurons. So this is the first motor neuron. It goes to what's called the sympathetic ganglion. And a ganglion, remember, is just a group of cell bodies. And in this case, there is a sympathetic chain ganglion we call the sympathetic chain ganglion in this case because it is a group of cell bodies that runs alongside the spinal cord in the thoracic region specifically and also the lumbar region. And that is significant for the anatomy of the sympathetic nervous system. The parasympathetic nervous system is going to originate in the cervical region and also in the sacral region. So now to look at the postganglionic neuron, this is the second motor neuron. And the second motor neuron is going to end up releasing a neurotransmitter to the effector muscle. So for example, acetylcholine or norepinephrine would be released and cause the physiological response that we see indicated here by the red arrow. Now, one important characteristic that the autonomic nervous system possesses is that it has dual innervation. And what dual innervation means is that it has the ability to, with both divisions of the autonomic nervous system, both the sympathetic division and the parasympathetic division, it has the ability to actually affect the same organ. But the sympathetic division is going to do one thing, and the parasympathetic division is going to do the other thing. It's almost like both divisions are going to counterbalance the other. It's almost like they balance out each other. And so a great example of this is what happens to the iris. The iris is actually a group of smooth muscles. And you remember that smooth muscle is one of the effectors for the autonomic nervous system. So we see in this case that there is cranial nerve number three, which is a parasympathetic fiber. It is actually stimulating the iris to cause the iris to constrict. So this would be the effect for the parasympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system. Whereas the sympathetic division... Remember, it's going to have the one motor neuron and the second motor neuron, just like the parasympathetic does, the first motor neuron and the second motor neuron. But the sympathetic division is usually going to be the opposite effect. And we call this the adrenergic effect, usually because norepinephrine is the most common neurotransmitter that's going to be released from this, this second motor neuron. And we can see the anatomy of the autonomic nervous system shown in this chart. At the top of the slide, you can see the somatic nervous system. 
And remember, it's only one motor neuron. And specifically, it's a heavily myelinated axon. So the signal is going to travel very, very quickly to the end of the axon. Acetylcholine is going to be released, and it stimulates or excites skeletal muscle. In the case of the autonomic nervous system, there's two divisions, the fight or flight, or remember E division, and then there's the rest and digest parasympathetic division, which is the D division. So in this case, there's a preganglionic neuron, which is the first motor neuron, and both divisions have the same thing. The only difference is in the parasympathetic division, it's going to be long, and it'll be short in the sympathetic division, because remember that there is a sympathetic chain ganglia that's running alongside the spinal cord in the thoracic and lumbar area. There's also a second motor neuron in each case, and it's just going to be the opposite. So it'll be short in the parasympathetic division and long in the sympathetic division. And in the sympathetic division, recall that the neurotransmitter released mostly is norepinephrine, and it's acetylcholine in parasymp the parasympathetic division. There's also a modified version of a ganglia, which is what's called the adrenal medulla. And in the adrenal medulla, there is, acet there is norepinephrine and epinephrine, basically adrenaline, that's released directly from these nerve cells and floods into the blood vessel and excites the cardiac muscle and other muscles as well. Now, when you see acetylcholine, the term cholinergic is referring to acetylcholine. So a lot of medications, for example, that you may come in, in contact with in the future, you're going to see the word cholinergic. And you'll need to know that that causes a parasympathetic effect.